First off, I think you know today was good. I think the uh, our offensive line responded well. I think uh, yesterday, you know, I think the defense probably had the edge, but I like the way our offensive line responded. Um, you know, so it was a, you know, it's good practice. I think you're gonna have battles sometimes. You know, one side's gonna be ahead of the other and all that. Generally, the defense uh, will be ahead uh, for the most part, especially early in camp. But I like the way we're competing against each other. I think our guys are in great shape. Uh, we've had, we had one guy that was out a little, you know, uh, bruise or something. Uh, John Miller, he or he had a, uh, he had a little bruise on his uh, ankle, I think, but he'll be fine. That that won't take long. But other than that, guys are in in pretty good shape. I, I think the first three days of camp are critical to get through. A lot of times you'll have your hydration issues. You'll have you know, guys cramping, pulling, and things like that the first three days. Uh, but for the most part, I think we're in pretty good shape that way. Um, you know, but uh, so it's everything's going really good. But I'll go ahead and open it up for questions. Hey, Coach, when Miller went out, you had Cyril ready to go in there, and I know you've been pleased overall with what he's been doing. Cyril. I have. And, you know, today we did a little nine on seven, and obviously that's going to be a strength of his, that run block, and because, uh, you know, he's a big man that can move people. Rex does uh, the new news. Now, you know, I mean, obviously we're aware of, you know, what, what's out there and things like that. But, um, uh, you know, really have nothing else to add on it. Really not going to, you know, uh, comment really anymore uh, right now. I don't feel comfortable commenting on it. Um, but, again, we'll, we're will we working with the league right now, and uh, we'll have more to say about it in the near future. I know you're a guy that caught your eye. Do you think that that's his job to lose? Does he have a, have a step up that's kind of improves it? That could be his job? Well, it absolutely could be his job. I mean, there's there's competition, you know. So I think that's, you know, Chantrell, you know, I, I hope will feel differently. I mean, he's going to think that I'm going to battle to, to win that job, you know. So, but right now, he's, he's running with the ones. So, um, Look at it any way you want, but I will say this: everybody's going to get an opportunity, and if it's you know, Chantrell will certainly get an opportunity to uh, uh, for that position as well. But it's going to be a good battle. There, I don't think there's any doubt about that. When you look at the Quandro practices, and then you saw him in his game. What did you notice was different with maybe the way Aaron taught him, or what did you notice that's different? I think first off, you know, you're aware of. You know how people evaluate guys. Whatever you look at, at different things, but when you come in, everybody has a clean slate, and it doesn't matter. You know, quite honestly, because somebody may fit your scheme a little differently than they fit others. A lot of it has to do with confidence, and I think when you come in as a second year, it's not all new to you. You know, you learn how to become a pro, and um, you know, I think all I've seen from him is that uh, he's willing to work. He works his you know his tail off. Uh, he did it in the in the classroom. He did it in the weight room, uh, and so I think that bodes well with you. When when you know what you're doing and you're physically ready to do it, I think that's you know that's a pretty good start. You look for the pads to come on. I look for them to be physical, like we do all our line. Is that a question on Chris Just on what his condition is. Yeah, he it's it shouldn't be long uh, for him to be able to jump back out there and things like that. So. Uh, you know, hopefully he'll be be ready to roll real soon. Yeah, I'm not going to get into the specifics of it because, quite honestly, I don't know the, the exact particulars of the injury, so I don't want to tell you something that's not true. I know you addressed the Otis yesterday, but you saw him there today. It's all part of the scooter. It's part of the scooter. Well, I, I think he could walk, but I think it's obviously that we're trying to, you know, keep some weight off of that injury right now. Yeah, I would think so. You know, so, uh, but again, we're not, you know, opportunities come to other people. Uh, we're excited about where Darby's at, you know, uh, and, and some of the other guys will, will get the reps. We've talked about the depth that we've had at that position. It was good. Um, but obviously, Leo, you know, Leotis is a good football player. We hope that he gets back on the field soon. Hey, Russ, what you just talking about uh, different than what he did at Florida State when he was talking about his base and, you know, Nick Ryder and all that. I mean, how much of that uh, did you know was happening? 
I think there's a, uh, a step up anytime you get to this level. Your technique has got to be what you rely on. It's got to be perfect. That you know, I mean, you you strive to be perfect here. But um, when you're evaluating guys, uh, we feel pretty good. You know, we know we got we got three guys that are as good a coaches in the secondary as there, there is in the league. Obviously, with with Dennis Thurman and, and Donnie Henderson and, and Tim McDonald. So. Between those three, I know we all felt good that we can get him uh, him caught up to speed, uh, you know, with with these techniques, and uh, so far so good. Rex, you talk about. Oh, of course. Yeah, I mean that's not the first time we ever started a rookie. Um, so yeah, no, we feel that this guy can play, and you know we'll see. How, you know, hopefully Leotis comes back, uh, you know, soon. But obviously, if he doesn't, the next man steps up. But we feel good about Darby. We feel good about. Uh, you know, there's Kid Butler. All he does is make plays. So you put him in there. You got, you know, other guys that have played. You know, Brooks. You got, you know, we, we're, we're blessed to have a, a lot of guys that can play back there. Rex, you talked about clean slate a little bit earlier, and you encountered that last year in person. But where you said, I guess the reputation wasn't as good. Here he's been absolutely terrific, terrific with, when it came to the Jets. Right. What are you? How has? How far has he come? Or has he? Matured, or has he even matured? I don't, I don't want to say matured, but how far has he come over the year in, in which you first encountered him? Well, the day I met him, he was outstanding, and that's where he is right now. So I think he's, uh, like I mentioned before, I mean he's a great teammate. He's all about the team. He's not, he's not on, you know, I've got to catch this this amount of balls and things. Now, obviously, with his skill set. He's going to catch a lot of balls here, you know, because that's the best the best thing for our team, you know, get the ball in his hands. But it doesn't have to be. You don't have to, you know, he doesn't have to catch 10 balls. He doesn't have to, you know, run, you know, run with the ball. He doesn't have to do anything. He's just going to be a great teammate. And that's where his focus is. How he, how can he help the football team? And that's what he wants to do. And did his, you, you acknowledge his reputation before. I mean, is it still, he, he did seem to come with baggage whether rightly or wrong. Right. Well, I know. I mean, I mean, I know what the reputation was or whatever someone thinks, but you know what you hear. But you also talk to other people that knew better, you know. And so for us, I, I mean, I know uh, that you know this is a young man that that we seriously considered taking with our first pick when I was, you know, would have been my first pick as a head coach, and as you know. He was a guy that was, if we didn't, we actually traded up for Mark Sanchez. If we didn't get Sanchez, we were going to go after Percy. Hey, Coach, when you uh, get into teamwork and you do the two-spot drills, you know, opposite end of the field, and you talked about the reasons why, but what are the conditioning benefits for that? And how many, are you getting double reps from guys? You're not necessarily getting double reps, but you're getting a heck of a lot more reps. There is no question about it. That's what we talked about today. You know, we, uh, you know, with the with third group, you know, in particular that, hey, look, it's third group on a depth chart, but that doesn't mean you're you're getting uh, less plays because you're going to get as many. I don't care if you're first string, second string, third string. You're getting the exact same reps. I mean, you're getting as, you know. And I said it's good news, bad news. Good news is you're getting all those reps. Bad news is you're going to be responsible for what the first team and what the second team uh, knows. And today, for, you know, for instance, I think we blew three, three, uh, you know, calls on defense. You know, now hey, they were a little. Advanced or whatever, but it means nothing. You're, you know, you're expected to have them down, um, and I think, you know, I want to make sure that they were aware of that, so I kind of threw them in there on them. But it's, uh, but that's the way it is, and and I think that's why it gives you a fair evaluation. And we always say that tape doesn't lie. You know, there's times when I'm not even my backs, you know, I can't see all of them, so I can see this group going. And then by that, that one's already gone. So sometimes you got to catch everything up on tape. I might not see it on the field until we get back in here and watch it on tape. Two days in at safety, uh, Corey's been taking the reps over at Duke. Is it more what Corey is doing or something Duke needs to do better? Well, we just give opportunities out there. And, and uh, obviously, you know, Corey never, didn't have a whole lot of work, but I wanted him to work with Aaron. Uh, you know, it would make them both communicate. Corey hasn't been there as long. Aaron never got any reps, you know, in the mini camps. So they got to they got to survive together without their, you know, without leaning on a guy that had been there every single day. So I think, you know, when you go to the uh, the second group, you know, when you have Duke out there, you have um, uh, Meeks and, and Rambo. Their communication has been spectacular. I mean, when when you look, especially Meeks and, and uh, Duke, they they jumped out at me. Uh, so you know, I expect them to be a little 
ahead of it. But, you know, uh, Aaron, you know, I, I've been really pleased with him. And then uh, Corey as well. For Corey, how valuable and how critical is all of this experience when you're making a positional switch? The fact that he's been around for so long, you know, he has that time. Well, I think, you know, the big thing is um, what it allows your defense to do. When you're, when you're able to play man coverage at the safety position, that, that is huge. Um, so I think that's, that's obviously a big plus for us. And we want to play a lot of man. Um, so having that kind of skill set really helps. You guys impressed with Robert Woods. It seems like he quietly just goes out there and consistently makes plays. Uh, he, made a, he made a great catch today, um, you know, compete for the ball and things. Great route runner, great hands. Uh, and he's very competitive, and I, I think those are, you know, some great traits. Marcel Darius Russell, if you can talk about just how his, his exact sort of fit is in your particular scheme, maybe how it differs from the way he's kind of done it before. It looks like you've you got more gap responsibilities. Uh, we're moving around. It really depends on the call, but he'll be shooting gaps. He'll be playing, you know, we can play an odd defense, an even defense. We can play anything you want, anything known to man. So he's going to be asked to do a lot of different things. Sometimes he will be in a two-gap uh, spot, but most of the time we're going to be attacking people. And have you been impressed with just, just with this guy's always out His contract, I know he's trying for a new contract. So, no, nah, not really. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, you find these guys all the time, you know, with that kind of size, athleticism, and all that. Yeah, they're, they're a dime a dozen out there. But no, he is so he's unique and with his skill set and and I love the I mean he loves to work he plays he just he's got a smile on his face he is doing what he loves to do and that's play football. Rex, Rex this is a couple this more defense guys. has gone this is just straight here switch between a base three four four three but particularly this year the players obviously are very familiar with your system having worked under Mike Patton since two years ago. Do you think that they're further along after the spring practices and two training camp practices than they otherwise would have been if they're learning from scratch? Yeah, but there's a lot of things we do differently too. So it's not just, you know, this thing's ever, ever changing, ever developing. Uh, so, you know, things that we might have done three, four years ago, we might be doing it a different way now. So it's, it's always, you know, we always tweak things. Um, you know, it's not, we don't coach out of the book. We, we invented the book. So I think that, uh, you know, it is new. Rex, how do you feel Sean Carl Henderson has responded after a not so great season? I've been really impressed with him. Uh, you know, I talked to him today a little bit about, you know, he had some time in Minnesota and then also went down to Miami and trained. Talk about one extreme to the other. But, um, I've been really impressed. He came in great shape, and he's, you know, he's he's ready to compete. I don't think there's any doubt about that. So that's where that competition is going to be. You know, it's going to be fierce, and it's going to be great to watch. Uh, and we'll see how it, how it shakes out in the end. No, we would never do that. <laughs> I know you mentioned a little bit earlier. I'm sorry, John Miller. Nothing serious in that. No, nothing serious at all. He'll he, he'll probably be a day, maybe a two days max. Well, no, I think it's, you know, we're going to get him, whether he's first team, second string or whatever. I just think it's, you know, being consistent. And, um, you know, from a physical standpoint, this young man's, you know, uh, he, he's gifted that way. There's no question. But mentally, be sharp, technique-wise, all that type of stuff. You can always get better, and I think that's what you got to strive to do. But um, I think that's the main thing. You know, he clearly showed everybody by coming in shape that he's ready to compete. You know, I think that was it. And, and just, um, you know, the accountability, uh, and I think he showed that that was a great sign that, uh, that he gets it. He gets what we want, and that's, that's for him to be at his very best.